after five months of delaying this, it's finally here. The Stores Lab Events of 2020. A little fun fact before we jump right into this whole thing. This was actually meant to be published five months ago on January 23rd of 2021. However, as you could have clearly tell, I completely forgot about it. All the way until pretty much now. I kept telling you guys in earlier study vlogs and other videos throughout that time that I was going to do it, and then it didn't happen. That was until now. So, let's finally get this over with before I keep getting more comments about it. Shall we? Because, knowing me, probably gonna get more comments saying that I still haven't done it yet. So, uh, yeah, here it is. Finally. Now let's get this done. To start it all off, of course, as usual, of 2020. It started on December 31st, 2019, and came to an end on January 7th of 2020. As usual with all New Year's parties, it was of course located at the roof. Of course, uh, the only difference was that the color scheme was different, i.e. being round. Why was this? Well, I don't know. I felt like being random at the time. So, yeah, that's what it is. There's actually a lot more to this than I really thought. And, well, that's it. There really isn't much to say about this one. Well, that's actually the case with all of these ones. All the New Year's events, there's no, not really anything that special to talk about. Anyway, moving on. The next one is definitely going to be something cool to talk about. The rest of them, I'm talking about. The next party in 2020 was the Zoya's Lab 5th Anniversary Party. It started on January 9th and came to an end on... Well, actually, it was originally meant to end on January 30th. But it actually ended the day after on the 31st. This is because I forgot to take it down. So, of course, this party was to celebrate the five-year anniversary of the original Soul's Lab. And just technically the whole thing, the whole, like, thing of the whole. There we go, I was trying to say that. Of course, this party featured a ton of cool stuff, such as lab trivia, old party rooms containing from out the last five years of the lab, and, of course, a ton of cool items. For the first time ever in an anniversary party, there was no anniversary giveaway, aka free items being given out. The same thing also happened the year after in 2021 for the sixth anniversary party. So, yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that one next year once we get out, once we're out of 2021. We'll get to next year's events after that. Anyway, point is, focusing on these ones. This was actually quite a big one. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually ginormous. This probably had to be one of the biggest anniversary parties we had ever done in the lab's history. For the first time since the third anniversary party, old past rooms were featured around the lab, continuing to the lab's fifth anniversary. This was eventually not happening again in 2021. The only reason it was brought back again in this party was because of the lab being five years old at the time, which now it's six, because it's now a year later. Anyway, the point is, Kinds of rooms such as rooms from 2017, 2015, basically any year of the lab had at least one or two rooms featured from it. And that was absolutely cool. So with the inclusion of past rooms, trivia, and old temporary rooms from the lab, you got to admit, it was probably one of the biggest anniversary parties ever. Although, I don't know if I can really say that because the year after probably changed it all entirely for the better. But this one, this one to be honest, this probably had to be my favorite lab anniversary party to ever create. I'm not even kidding. I had way too much fun creating this. And it was so, so cool. 
All right, everybody, let's move on to the next event. Seriously, I seriously believe this is the best anniversary party we've ever done for the lab. And I don't even know if we're able to top off last year's with this year's. Eh, find out when I review this again next year. The next party to be held in Zoa's lab, a lot of these are from Zoa's lab too, but we don't worry, we do include Zoa's lab free somewhere in here. I promise you, we'll get to that later. This next one was the time travel party. It was the first time the time travel party had happened in almost a year. This is also the last one to occur for now until we decide to bring it back. And no, it will not be brought back here in 2021. I have the entire year scheduled for both labs. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, I forgot. We will get back to the lab series soon. This is actually preparing myself to get back to the lab. What I'm doing now. Anyway, point is, speaking of labs actually, this party actually featured us to go back in time to the old Zola's Lab 3 Halloween event of 2019. Well, that's what the only time period we did go to. The real point of this party was to actually go back in time to older versions of the lab to celebrate its fifth anniversary. It was huge. It started January 23rd and ended the exact same day as the anniversary party on January 31st. Like the anniversary party, it was meant to end on the exact same day of January 30th. But again, both of them ended on the same day of January 31st, leading into another event. But I gotta admit, this was cool. How cool was it though? Take a look. We actually went back in time to Zoa's Lab 3 from October of 2019. That was cool, right? Well, there was meant to be more time periods, but this was the only one we did due to me forgetting to finish it all. So the only time period we went to, which was the one you're seeing in this footage. Oh well, hey, at least we did something about it. And I gotta say, it was pretty cool. I don't know the next time we're ever gonna do something like this where we include the time machine. It will probably not be for a while, probably not till next year because I don't know. I'm just not up to doing it this year. But eh, it'll probably come back next year. Probably. I don't know. We'll see. The next party on our list for 2020 is actually an all new one. A new one that had never been seen before. The 100th episode party of Zola's Lab 2. It started on January 31st. And fun fact, this party was actually a total surprise, actually, because we did not think we were going to be hitting the 100th episode of Zoe's Up 2 right after the lab's 5th anniversary party. So this was a total surprise that came out of absolutely nowhere because none of us expected it. But alongside that was the Festival of Snow of 2020. The reason why that was held alongside it was to make, to make up for not having one of those in 2019. And yes, there will be one here again in 2021. Now I'm not sure if it's actually going to be in Zola's Up 2 or Zola's Up 3. Since I already have all of Zola's Up 2 planned for the rest of the year, it will be at Zola's Up 3 this year. Since I don't have the rest of it planned after Operation Galaxy. Anyway, point is, let's get back into it. So yes, the whole lab was decorated for the Festival of Snow, however, this one was a bit different as it actually incorporated with all the lights being off. And instead, all the lights were replaced by torches, at least lighting up all the ice sculptures. There was even a brand new Festival of Snow themed banner, which had never been seen before, and even a new hat. After like a few years. This was super cool. It started on January 31st, which was the same day the anniversary party ended, as again, this event was a complete surprise. It ended originally meaning to end on February 3rd. However, it actually ended on February 14th, due to us forgetting to take it down, just like the anniversary party. Also, granted, 
The reason also it stayed up for a little bit long is because I was actually away of the week that this video was being filmed. The week that this video was being filmed, February 4th, I was actually kind of away a few days later. So I wasn't able to actually co clean it up till after. So I eventually cleaned it up on Valentine's Day. Now actually, uh, 100 episode party itself, there was a lot for this. And I mean, a lot going into this. Give me a sec. Okay, there we go. I don't know what the heck was going on here. But there was a lot going on for this. Yes. The lab was indeed decorated for this. It was super cool. And a great way to celebrate 100 episodes of the whole entire Solaris Lab 2 series. Yes, this party was actually held for the 200th episode of the Solaris Lab 2 series. Now with that being said, however, uh, that is actually it for this one. It was super cool, super awesome, and let's move on. This one, next one, shall be interesting. The next event in Zola's Lab, which was another one from Zola's Lab 2. Don't worry, we'll get back to Zola's Lab 3 at some point in the video. Don't worry, it, Zola's Lab 3 will appear here somewhere, I promise you. Uh, this was the return of the war after three years. And no, there was no war this year because... Uh, we kind of went on a hiatus with the lab, by accident. It will return again next year, I promise. Um, but yeah, the war 2020! The Zola's Lab vs. Evil Street Leaders Lab War 2020! Holy frick, it was super cool to see this event return after like three years. It started on February 20th and came to an end on, well... Originally March 5th, but it actually went all the way until March 31st because for the millionth time now, we went on a bit of a hiatus with the lab by complete accident. And it wasn't taken down until the 31st of March. Oh my god. And it's kind of funny that I mentioned that because Lab of Doom for this year is actually still up as we speak. It's all because I forgot. But really, in serious reality, this event was actually pretty cool. Like the past few wars, the lab was entirely dark, causing because of Evil Suit Leader for the third time in a row, or at least just the third time in general, because there wasn't one in 2018 or 2019, for the third time, he took out the power source of the lab, causing the lab to go dark for the third time. But this wasn't actually the third time the lab went dark, however. In Operation Dome in 2018, the lab also went dark due to the dome covering the lab. So this was technically the fourth time in a row that the lab was completely dark. So with that being said, that is cool. Now, as usual with all the other wars, it pretty much played out exactly the same. The only difference was the setup. And yeah, you can completely agree on that because it looked entirely different. Some elements were still used. And as usual, all things from the previous war made a return, aside from the battlefield being entirely different, due to the layout of the lab being a bit different. So with that being said, although this war was cool, he did manage to take over the lab in a cool way. He was a leader, I'm meaning. Um, it was pretty cool seeing this event finally after three years, I'll give you that. It was very cool seeing this again after like three years. And again, we didn't get one this year because we took another lab hiatus by accident. And that was my fault. Although I didn't even plan to have a war this year anyway. I wasn't even thinking about it anyway, so... Yeah, again, maybe next year we'll bring it back again. I kind of don't want to make the war a yearly thing anymore just because it pretty much just plays out the same. I kind of want to give myself time to actually think of something new and creative. So maybe next year it'll come back. But as for right now, 
Let's move on to the next one. And then I also just realized right now, guys, I completely skipped the Valentine's Day one. Let me go to that now. Yeah, I probably should have showcased this first before the war, but oh well. Let's just go in random order. The Valentine's Day party. It started on February 14th and ended on the 21st. This party was only held in the underground party room, as we were having the war at the time. Or it's probably just because I felt like holding it down there. For also just like the Festival of Snow, for the first time there was actually a banner. And they were pretty much placed all over the room. It was cool. It was awesome. And that was the last Valentine's Day party we've ever had because there wasn't one in 2021 for the millionth time now thanks to us accidentally taking another lap hiatus. So there was not a Valentine's Day party this year though, but there was one last year, which is what this footage is. It will come back next year, I promise. But this wasn't the only time the Valentine's Day party will make a return after two years because it also happened in 2019 because I wasn't at home. But with that being said, this was super cool. The Valentine's Day party was actually cool this time. For one, it actually had something new, such as a banner and a brand new hat, alongside the entire beacons being lit for Valentine's Day, which was actually never seen before. And I believe for the first time ever, I think this was the first Valentine's Day party to have the underground party room decorated. So that was also new at the same time as well. At least from what I remember, I do not remember having it decorated in any other events for Valentine's Day besides this one. All right, everybody, moving on. Oh, and this next one's gonna be beautiful. Next up, guys, we have a combination of two events. We have the Underwater Expedition, which was originally meant to be held earlier in March of 2020, and the April Fool's Party of 2020. So we had a combination of two different events going on at the same time. I'll explain the Underwater Expedition one first, as that was the main event of the whole month, at least leading up to that. Granted, this was made on March 31st, so yeah, you can see why. Anyway, with the Underwater Expedition, this one was actually entirely different for once. And thank God it was, because I was getting kind of tired of the usual just unlock the underwater room and find it was a leader. No. No, 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 no. This was entirely different. We actually went to the ocean. And I'm meaning the legit ocean. A far away from Zola's up too. And holy frick, that was awesome. That was just awesome. We even had an entire dimension based off of the underwater expedition. Do you not understand that? So not only was the lab flooded, and I'm meaning just the lab building itself. No, no, this was the first underwater expedition ever to not have the entire lab flooded with water. And what I mean by is having a huge chunk of water all over the lab. You notice that there is not a huge chunk of water above the lab. And this was the first underwater expedition to do so. And fun fact, if this year's underwater expedition did happen, which I'm pretty sure it probably won't now because I have the rest of the year planned. Um, that also wouldn't have happened either, where a huge chunk of water would avoid the lab, or at least cover the lab. So yeah, this was the first underwater expedition to not have the entire lab flooded for once. You want to know what the real plot of it was? Yep, that's right. A true, full-on adventure underwater and i mean the legit ocean it was super super cool now with that being said however we were able to find a ton of underwater treasure first off in this first mission being fireworks it was actually awesome and here's proof that this was a legit underwater expedition. As you can tell in the footage, this was a legit underwater expedition taking place in the actual ocean of Soy's Lab 2. 
So you can see, we were not messing around with this thing. But the other quests definitely make sense. And yeah, as you can notice, if you just saw there, this was nowhere near Zoya's Lab 2. Now, this was actually far away from the lab itself. Yep, this was far away from the lab itself. It was awesome. Seriously. Why was this so cool? The other quests, however, were also very cool as well, as they also involved the actual underwater expedition. What I'm meaning is, these signs right here, where we would have to find the missing dolphins that would originally be in the water tanks of the lab. We would have to find dolphins from throughout the ocean and bring them back to their respective water tanks via these signs saying missing for the dolphins. The other missions included uh, being on a ship looking like this and finding buried treasure around it. It was actually super cool. We found a ton of treasure on this boat, on this ship to be exact. It was super cool and pretty unique at the time. We found a ton of cool stuff around here. We found underwater themed items, things that would help us find Evil Street Leader, and tons of other cool things that would never have occurred in the underwater expedition. Oh yeah, did I mention there was also an icon for the first time in this event? Yep, that was also new too. So as you'll notice, all the quests were brand new and more creative than the previous underwater expedition. And yes, like I just said, items were found via the chests inside the ship. But the last quest probably had to be the cool. The Evil Street Leader actually found a cool way to hide away from us in the underwater expedition. I am still impressed. And what you're seeing in the footage is actually still in the lab today, actually. I actually kept it after defeating the Evil Street Leader in this war for the underwater expedition. His underwater temple. Yes, I just said, this is still here in the lab today. It's permanent, and we can actually visit it any time, actually. As we could speak. Well, as we speak, we could visit it at any point in the lab. And yes, this was legit Evil Seat Leader's underwater temple. It was seriously fantastic. And what I mean by fantastic, I mean freaking fantastic. How the heck was he able to create something this good? Oh, and if you thought that was cool, later on, we eventually had to go through an underwater themed battle. What I mean by is, well, take a look. As you'll notice, we had to go through an underwater themed battle in the temple itself to find Evil Seed Leader. Of course, he wouldn't make our quest that easy, so we sent a bunch of underwater feed mobs against me. So we couldn't get to it. It was very, very, very cool and super interesting at the same time. Now at the exact same time as the underwater expedition, it was the April Fool's party. I forgot to mention when they both were uh, released. The Underwater Expedition and April Fool's Party started on March 31st and came to an end, originally meaning to end on April 7th. However, it actually ended three days later on April 9th, due to me not finishing the challenges in time, or just the quests. But it did eventually end on April 10th, though, which was 10 days after release. As usual with all the other April Fool's parties, and yes, I am very sorry that we didn't get this one, get one this year. That's again because of the lab hiatus. This year would have also been the five year anniversary of the April Fool's party as a whole, so I cannot believe we actually skipped it. It would have also been the five year anniversary of all the dimensions. So yeah, again, just want to make it clear. Sorry about not doing one this year. Um, we completely forgot. All because of that stupid godforsaken lab hiatus. Oh well. Anyway, all the dimensions returned like usual. And, well, you could guess it by now, they all had nothing new in them. However, that doesn't mean that the whole lab was also decorated once again, just like 2019. All the rooms were decorated once more. And I mean every single room was updated once again, just like 2019. 
but of course entirely different. Now with that being said, however, that is super cool. But did you really and seriously think that was all we did for the April Fool's party? No, we actually did a few other things too. So yes, dimensions such as the black and white dimension, um, hold on, the evil dimension came back too from last year's April Fool's party. Well, from 2019. Of course, nothing was there since it had been an entire year. Or almost an entire year since it happened. Since the evil dimension was rediscovered. But there was actually something entirely new for once. And that was the old mind dimension. Which was basically a recreation of the old mine area from... Well, have yourselves a look. Take a look. This was the old mine dimension from, or at least just the old mine from an old Bigger the Season 2 episode in 2016. It had finally been released in the April Fool's Party. And although if we did have the April Fool's Party this year in 2021, that would have also been brought back too. But it didn't. Oh, rip. Anyway. That was it for the April Fool's Party. Let's finally move on to the next one. Sorry that that took so long. Next up, guys, is the Easter Egg Hunt of 2020. It started on April 10th and ended on April 23rd, actually. It was originally meant to end on April 16th, or actually April 13th, but we left it on just because I forgot to showcase it. So that was cool. So yeah, that was super cool. Did I also mention this is also the first standalone Easter event since around 2017? But it was also the first ever Easter egg hunt to not go on during a party since 2015. So that was also pretty freaking fantastic. Wait, sorry, I'm wrong. 2016 was the last time the Easter egg kind of event went on while no party was going on. So yeah, four years. And the same thing would have would have happened. Oh wait a minute, it would not have happened this year because it would have been three days after April Fool's Day. I forgot. Anyway, point is, you guys get the deal by now. As you know, with these events, of course, a ton of eggs would have been hidden around the lab and I would have had to find them. It would have been cool if we did that this year. Seriously. Look at all the things we just skipped out on this year. Oh well. Don't worry, it's all coming back this month. Uh, the whole lab thing. And yeah. Oh, but did I also mention this was the first ever Easter egg hunt to actually have Easter themed rooms? Meaning I'm talking about having rooms actually decorated for the set event. Yep, that's right. For the first time ever in an Easter egg hunt, there were actually rooms decorated. And it was actually super cool. No other Easter egg hunt before 2020 had rooms decorated fully based on the holiday. I guess you could possibly say <clears throat> uh, 2018 most likely because, um, you know, we did actually have a few decorations based off of it, but I'm talking about actual full on Easter themed rooms. Yeah, this was the first one to do so. It was actually completely, and I mean seriously, 100% actually fantastic. Seriously, why were we this good? It was actually pretty freaking fantastic to actually have rooms decorated in this event. So with that being said, that was it. It was just a normal Easter egg hunt. The only difference was that there was now actually rooms decorated. That was awesome. Next up, guys, was the Earth Day party of 2020. It started on April 22nd and ended on April 30th. Originally meaning to end on April 
29. Well, this party was actually entirely small, as it only featured one room. The recycling plant. Which, by the way, has also been removed entirely as of December 4th, 2020. Um, we'll get to that later. So, with that being said, um, this was actually the smallest birthday party. The only thing available were just banners. And actually, that was the also the only decoration. So with that being said, that was it. Nothing else to say about it. So, uh, let's move on now, shall we? I know, again, there's literally nothing else to say about this. Next up, guys, we have the Fair of 2020. It started on April 23rd and ended on May 7th. This party was actually cool. And fun fact, actually, speaking of the fair, actually, that is actually the next event in Zola's Up 2. Actually coming next week, actually. That is actually in actual present day. Yeah, the next event in Zola's Up 2 for 2021 is actually the fair. Yep, it comes next week. Next Sunday, to be exact. Anyway, what about the 2020 fair, though? This one was actually pretty much different, as it actually tied knots back to older fairs from 2015 and 2016. This party actually answered the question, where did all the theme park games come from? And well, this party answered that question, as several areas of the lab were decorated to the specific theme of where the games come from. And that was super, super cool. I did not think I would come up with something that creative. And I don't even know what the heck I'm doing for this year's fair. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I actually already do know what I'm already doing with the fair this year. Since it'll be going on at the exact same time as this year's Best Party Awards, I already know what I'm doing for that one. So, sorry. Forgot. Um, it's just I just haven't brought it up yet. Or actually, I think I already have. So with that being said, this was actually cool. So basically, the, the deal with this party was... The lab office was decorated like the main area of the fair. There was even some fair themed rides such as a fair themed water slide and other cool activities at the same time. This was also the first ever fair to not have any of the rides free. No, for the first time ever in the history of the fair events, you actually had to win a silver ticket to go on any of the rides. So that was cool, right? You actually had to win a silver ticket to go on any of the rides. It was actually seriously cool. And I'm actually planning on bringing that back again this year because it was so cool last year. So each week of the event, or actually every day of the event, a new prize would unlock. And by week two, the upstairs one would unlock as well. So that was super cool. Mr. Sheep guarded the downstairs one for week one, and Flower Sheep guarded the upstairs one for week two. Now, that was cool, right? Because, seriously, it is. So basically, all the areas were actually decorated. There were plenty of things. And yes, there's proof that it was the, the whole server ticket thing was not a joke. I am bringing that back this year just because it was super cool last year. Anyway, there were a ton of fun rides and games at this party at the same time. And a lot of it actually had to do with most of it being just decorations, such as the ship. You can even find silver tickets randomly around the lab, actually, to get on certain rides. Not only just by doing the daily spin, or just the game upgrade. No, there were actually cool ways to get them this time. You could actually find them randomly around the lab, either on certain decorations, or just randomly on places around the lab itself that aren't even decorated. 
that was super cool. And as time went on, you could actually get more of them. So as time went on, more areas, well actually, what I'm meaning here is all the areas of the lab, again, were decorated like their respective theme for their said games. For example, the outside of the lab was decorated as like um, a pirate theme to commemorate the games that were actually held in the Pirate and Bose Park on Lagos Island, but were originally met at the lab. The Bola game is a reference to the Western Park in the old Solis Lab theme park from 2015. So that's super cool. That was the uh, underground room. And the UFO area, if I can uh, pull it up here, was, well, let me pull up the footage. Can I find it? And I find it. There it is. Found it. This was, well, where all the space games were, such as Speed of Sheep, the Space Roller Coaster, uh, the Lunar Launch game, and a ton of other cool stuff was. It was super cool and super unique. And no, I'm not bringing that back this year for this year's fair. I think I already got something else I want to do. And since it's going on at the same time as this year's Best Party Awards, I definitely need to come up with something even more creative. So with that being said, that was very, very cool. Oh, and did I mention that later on, a brand new permanent room to the lab would actually be introduced? Well, not actually permanently, but it is a temporary room that would eventually be at the lab permanently, just locked off until the, until absolutely needed. And we'll be brought back at this year's fair. This one was called the Lazy River. It was super cool, and you actually could win stuff from this. It was actually pretty cool. That's what I was about to say later on, a new room would have been added. But what the? Oh, okay. I did not mean to do that. Anyway, later on, this room actually felt cool. You could actually find stuff around here. You would use a trident to get all the tickets off the walls in this room. And that was the only thing that really actually was a part of it. So yes. It was serious. You could actually find stuff in this room. It felt super cool and super interesting. And I'm glad it became a new part of the lab as I actually really liked the room. And that's how it looked. It was super cool and super awesome. Oh, and just to be clear, that message right there hinted Lab of Doom, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. Actually, right now. But before that, I bring you the return of the special labs party. It started on April 30th and ended on May 7th, originally meaning to end on May 4th. This was to celebrate the return of the special labs. And actually, I'm going to show you the footage here because this is actually the original footage before it happened. There's the footage. Here it is. Right here. There's the footage. So yes, this was the official special lab return party. Once again, it started on the second week of the fair, as that's actually when the special labs actually returned. And it was actually super cool. I'm not even going to lie. This was actually super cool. Of course, there's nothing else to be held down here as, well, we only use it for purposes that are actually needed. And we will be using this actually for the fair, actually. It will be included in the fair again. This year's. So, yeah, that was it. Nothing else for this room. Aside from, well, the special labs returned finally after three years, which was also fantastic. All right. So, now, let's finally move on to Lab of Doom. Yes, finally, Lab of Doom. Oh, yeah, I'm still going to make this year's video. 
Oh, oh, why am I doing this to myself? Anyway, Lab of Doom 2020. It started on May 7th and originally was meant to come to an end on June 11th. However, it actually ended on June 29th. This is because I forgot to take it down. You can see why a lot of these ended later than usual. Anyway, did I mention this was the first ever full-on original Lab of Doom since the first one in 2016? That's right! All of the phases were new! Finally, after like four years of the same repeated phases, and only just like one new phase each year. No, this time it was actually entirely original! Alongside a return of a few things, such as Evil Street Leader's Sky Fortress, and a ton of other cool things. There was so much to this one. This has to be my favorite Lab of Doom of all time. Seriously. Lab of Doom 2020 has to be my favorite one of all time. I am not even kidding you. There was just so much we did in this one. That just made it stand out so much. I do not know why we did not do this years ago. I do not understand why did we not think of doing this years ago. My god. It just felt cool. It just felt so cool. Finally coming up with something entirely creative. Now with that being said, however, the other phases. The first phase was the Evilizer on May 7th which turned the entire lab into Evil Suit Leader's actual lab. Which I gotta admit, he did a pretty freaking great job on that, I'm not gonna lie. It actually looked pretty fantastic. And well, the second phase included a, a lava machine on May 14th, which obviously covered the entire lab in lava, as you would expect. And I mean the whole lab. Well, not the places with the Evilizer, but everywhere else that wasn't affected by the Evilizer. They were all covered in lava in like crazy ways. And I cannot tell you how cool it was. Even the special labs were infected too. On May 21st, phase three was introduced. And this was the evil sheep attack. Caused, of course, by Evil Sheet Leader himself. As a recreation of his first ever attack at the lab back on November 5th, 2015, he recreated it in Lab of Doom 2020 Phase 3 on May 21st. This was actually genius. And when I mean by genius, I mean seriously genius. Why was this so good, you may ask? Well, it's because he actually managed to actually turn all the main sheep of the lab evil and steal all the gold of the lab that would normally keep the lab running. That is seriously genius. I cannot believe he pulled that off so cool and so crazy. Next, on May 28th, I snuck into Evil Suit Leader's base while he was not there and took a power source out of one of his machines to build a maze. That's right. I'm not kidding. I did. Here's the proof. Look. I, I took it. I actually got rid of it. I took it out of his lair and, uh, you know, made something out of it. And well, what I made out of it was this. That's right, a may. Of course, I had to go through it to find my way to defeat someone at the end of the maze. And that was, well, take a look. Well, it was none other than... Take a look. It was none other than... Wait, wait, hold on just one second. It was Polar Bear Leader, which was Evil Street Leader's sidekick. How cool was that? 
Sorry, I didn't speak about that for a few seconds. I was trying to remember. It was Polar Bear Leader, who was again the sidekick of Evil Sea Leader, the one who helps him out. And my lord, that battle was actually intense. It was beautiful. And well, that's... Phase 5 is a recreation of the Death Star from the Star Wars Party of 2016 from In Zars Up 2. It was a complete recreation. Although the difference this time was that we actually got to blow up Evil Sheep Leader's Sky Fortress along the way. It was cool seeing a recreated version of something we did only four years prior in, well, Lab of Doom itself. It was actually cool. And I can not believe we were able to pull this off. This was the only phase in Lab of Doom where we actually got to take revenge of Evil Sheet Leader, where we got to destroy something instead of him. That was seriously cool. And I cannot believe that all that happened in a seriously cool way. So with all that being said, well, that was it for Phase 5. We did blow up his Sky Fortress, though. Let me give you a little example of what that was. Ready? Three, two, one! Alright, so finally but not least for Phase... Finally but not least for Phase 6, guys. We had to take out Evil Suit Leader and his Sky Fortress. But it wasn't going to be that simple. We actually had to take out Polar Bear Leader at first to bypass our way into Evil Suit Leader's Sky Fortress. And my lord, was it beautiful. And I mean seriously beautiful. Even though it was already blown up, we were not actually done with him yet. Instead of actually battling Evil Suit Leader, we actually, well, have yourselves a look because it was pretty intense. Guess who we had to battle instead of Evil Suit Leader? That is right, everyone. Instead of Evil Suit Leader, we had to battle a Wither as, as he sent that against us. And he basically destroyed the entire world. That was pretty intense. Even some of Evil Sea Leader's base was destroyed. But eventually it was fixed later on. After the Wither was defeated, we actually managed to blow up his base. Well, basically looking like, well, this. Just having it a load. One sec. That's right. This. The entire base was blown up. Entirely! Yeah! He doesn't have a Sky Fortress this year. I will show you what it is in the actual video, though. Which will be out hopefully this weekend. Hopefully. Seriously! I need to get that done. Like, ASAP. It's way overdue. Will that do over with? Finally, we can finally move on to the next event, which won't take as long to discuss. The next 14 Souls of 2 was actually the June event, which actually happened later than usual. It was originally meant to start on June 25th and end July 9th, however, it started four days late due to me forgetting about it entirely. So, it started on June 29th and ended July 13th. This was actually the first time I think we have ever combined it three parties in one. At least, it, I think it was at least the first one in a long time to do so. This was actually insane. This was actually the first summer party to go full on insane with the creativity. As it was a combination between, well, I'll show you now, because it's quite interesting. It was a full-on, give me a second, let me tell you, it was a full-on <laughs> compilation between these set of X. 
Uh, take a look. The Summer Party, Water Party, and, well, the Star Wars Party 2020-2016 Remake. So it was three parties in one, which was actually insane. So how did this all go down? Oh yeah, that was the elemental party over there. We'll get to that actually right after. So yes, as you would expect, there would be a combination of all three parties. For the summer party, did I mention that every single room was brand new, just how Lab of Doom was entirely original? Yep, that's right. Every single room in this event was entirely brand new. Finally! After no longer reusing the same rooms, after many, many years, all rooms were entirely brand new. And there's proof that all of these were entirely brand new, with nothing being taken from previous summer parties. Oh, and one more thing. Did I entirely mention that, well... Yes, you can see here for yourself that, well, <laughs> there's also was full on water rooms back over there. That's right. Not only was it just summer rooms, but it was also water rooms at the exact same time. Yeah, there was also full on new custom made water rooms too. Making this a very cool party to combine. And fun fact, we're actually planning on doing this again, where we combine both the Summer Jam and Water Party into a single event, coming this July, actually. Yep, it's actually coming this July. We're actually going to be combining both of those events again. That's right. We're going to be doing it again, because it was so cool last year. So we're actually going to be doing that again in July, actually. But you guys get the point. All the rooms were entirely decorated as all new rooms. Everything here was even more creative than the previous summer party. And I gotta admit, that was actually seriously cool. So guys, with that being said, there was actually daily items in this party. There were actually daily items that came here alongside it. So not only were the rooms brand new, but there was also daily items. And a little fun fact, this was actually the first summer party since around 2017 to actually have a Summer Jam catalog. Yep, it was the first Summer Jam party since 2017 to have a catalog. Oh, and did I also mention this was also the first ever Summer Jam since 2017? That's right. There wasn't one in 2018 or 2019. Because 2018, it was replaced by the Water Party, which also replaced the Underwater Expedition for the year. And in 2019, there wasn't one because of several problems that we were having at the time of the lab. So, with that being said, that was super cool. Oh, and did I mention, and I mean, seriously, did I mention this the entire time that not only did this party introduce brand new rooms and items, but did I also mention at the exact same time that brand new water rides were introduced too, that are also still here today? That's right! Brand new water slides and rides were all introduced in this party that are also now a main key feature of the lab still to this day. It was seriously fantastic how much I could come up with. Seriously, it was super, super cool. Yes, all of these water rides are still at the lab today. And I still have an absolute blast with them. So with that being said, that is super, super cool. Yes, and the um, log ride, the log 
uh, water slide and the wave pool from the water party also made a return too, which are again, all still here today. The only new water ride was that see-through light blue slash blue water slide on the roof. Oh, and yes, if you're wondering why the Death Star was up there, I'll get to that in a minute. Because this was not just a summer and water party. Oh, no, 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 no. There was more to this than you really believe. As I said earlier, this was a competition between a remake of the original Star Wars party from 2016. As we actually remade it entirely. We recreated it four years later with something entirely new, combining recreated areas of the free set areas of the original party. So all of them were recreated, which was actually fantastic. All of this was combined into a summer party, which was nuts. Now, if you're wondering if we're doing that again, the answer is no. Why? Well, we already did it last year. So why not just not do it again? Because there's no point. So all of these were recreated. It was actually fantastic. But that wasn't all for this. Yep, there were more areas recreated from this. That were entirely new. And fun fact, I actually still have all of the worlds from this party still to this day, actually. Yep, they are all still here today with absolutely nothing changed. Because there's nothing else to change about them. So yep, this was super cool, right? With that being said, that was not the only thing that felt cool about this. No, the Death Star from the Lab of Doom 2020 Phase 5 was still there too. And for proof... Assuming you can load here. There we go. Yes, the Death Star from the original party was actually still here. But eventually was blown up later on. It was actually very cool. Very awesome to still have it. Again, eventually it was blown up later on. So it was cool to see that again. One final area was created too. For Phase 3 on July 9th. And oh boy. It was awesome. Seriously awesome. I did not think all of this could have happened. Within a summer party. Now, honestly, I was actually originally going to make it this its own standalone event earlier in June. But it didn't happen because I forgot about taking down Lab Doom at the time. So instead, I combined this with the summer party. Which I got to admit was actually cool at the same time. It was actually cool seeing this alongside the summer party. With that being said, that was it. The Death Star from Lab of Doom was blown up. Clearly managed to notice by now. And that was it for this whole party. All of it to be exact. Wait, never mind. It was blown up here. My mistake. My lord, that felt good. No way, here was the real action. Yeah, that was more like it. Fun fact, did I mention the cruise ship was originally meant to return in this party? After like three years? Well, <laughs> um, it didn't actually. It actually returned actually the day the party ended for some reason. It's just because I forgot to create it. And I still feel stupid for that. That would have that would have felt so good. Hey, at least we have it for this year's. That makes more sense. All right, now let's move on to the next party, which was the Elemental Party. The Elemental Party was another new event in Zorzaf 2, after the 100th episode party in January since so February of 2020. The Elemental Party was actually brand new. It was entirely new, never seen at the lab before, so why was this held, you might ask? Well, it was held to celebrate the uh, opening of a brand new dojo in the lab called the Sky Dojo. It was actually seriously cool. So as you would have expected, all of the elements of the lab were celebrated, and 
and it was super cool. It started on, Je uh, on July 23rd and came to an end on August 6th. And yes, this event was actually held at its correct time, unlike the others that I just mentioned prior, which was the summer party. So yeah, alongside this, the entire lab was actually decorated entirely like an elemental theme. And as you would have expected, all the rooms were entirely decorated as their said elemental theme. Oh, and one more thing. Did I mention that this party actually introduced brand new dojo redesigns? Yep, the fire, water, and dojo rooms. Uh, yeah, the fire, water, and snow dojo rooms all actually got new designs and actually stayed after the party because they were very, very cool. And they're all now permanent. Alongside a little bit of a, some new lighting in the water dojo, being the soul torches. Yep, that's right. That was all new here. Well, except for the fire dojo. Okay, I was wrong. But the others did. So with that being said, that was cool. Oh, and here was the temporary new battle area for the snow dojo, but I actually removed it just because it didn't look that good. Anyway, did I mention the entire lab building was turned into a dojo? And since they Wooly from the early days of Solus 3, the original, uh, actually showed up for this party for some reason out of nowhere. So that was out. Uh, that was awesome. Not gonna lie, that was pretty awesome. So with that being said, not only was that there, but the entire upstairs of the lab was also transformed into a dojo as well. So basically, we had to find each elemental shape throughout the lab. And, well, as you would have um, <clears throat> clearly would have expected by now, all rooms were transformed. Basically, to look like something like this, assuming it can, it can load. Oh yeah, even the special lab was decorated too. Forgot about that. Okay, enough messing around. Here were the actual rooms. So yes, it was true that all rooms were transformed to look like their respective elemental room. For example, the sheep room, the lab hallway, and I believe also the, um, I forgot, what was it? Uh, God, I keep forgetting. I think it was also the outside as well to all be fire-themed. Uh-oh. Give me a sec. Got it. Okay, I don't know what that was for. But, oh, right, the potion lab. Right, 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 right. Okay, so yeah, the sheep room, lab hallway, and potion room were all fire-themed. Uh, Rose Crystal's room, the library... And, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, all right, uh, Road Scoots' room, TV and game room, and, um, uh, library were all snow themed, and Snowland, uh, the, uh, meeting room, and I think. I don't remember, actually. Hold on, give me a second. Oh, right! The lab, uh, HQ Lobby! Right! Right! Okay. Oh! And remember how I said that the, uh, the quest was to find all the elemental sheep and bring them up to the dojo so what's it, so since they will, they could tell us how to unlock the sky dojo. Or at least tell us the history of why the dojos were all created. Unfortunately, we actually, I kind of actually forgot how they were created, so that was kind of a failure. But we did know how to unlock the Sky Dojo, though. That was pretty cool at the same time. So we had to find all the elemental sheep around the lab. 
in order to unlock the Sky Dojo. It was actually super cool. And pretty freaking fantastic, I'm not going to lie. It actually looked very, very cool. And yes, you could actually go to the Sky Dojo itself. And I'm not even kidding, it actually looked pretty fantastic. With that being said, after Sensei Willie told us how to get to the Sky Dojo, we eventually got ourselves up to the Sky Dojo, found Sky Sheep, and well, found out how to do stuff in the Sky Dojo. It was actually pretty cool. It was just super cool. So yes, this party was again to celebrate the opening of the Sky Dojo, which was awesome. And with that being said, everybody, that is it for the Elemental Party. Oh, and actually, I forgot. The Dojos, the Fire, Water, and Snow Dojos all got new battle systems in this party as well. That's one more thing I forgot to mention. I was about to go on to the next event, but then I completely forgot... Um, the fire, fire, water, and snow dojos all got new battle systems. Right, I completely forgot about that. Oh, and did I mention that there were actually three des room designs in the entire party to come back from the Zoe's Lab Free Party from 2017? This includes the rooms of the hallway fire room, the snowland water room, and lastly, Rose Crystal's room, Snow Room. All those three of those rooms were actually brought back from the Souls that Free Party, as you could have probably recognized right there. All right, now let's move on to the next. The next party to be celebrated was also brand new, it's as well at the same time, actually. Yep, they, this next one was also brand new. Never to be seen before. And it probably will never be seen again unless I ever want to come up with it again. It was an all-new custom event called the Souls Up 2 Temporary Shutdown Second Anniversary Event. If you guys don't remember, three years ago, on August 9th, 2018, we lost Souls Up 2 due to an unknown reason. Of course, we eventually got it back many months later. And then on August 9th, 2020, to celebrate the two-year anniversary, I made a mini-event, which was actually seriously cool. I did not plan originally on making this party, but I felt like it just because, I don't know, I wanted to tell you guys that I didn't forget about it. So I did make the party. Because I didn't want you guys to think I forgot about this whole thing. And no, I still haven't forgotten about it. If I did, I wouldn't even be mentioning this. Actually, I would have still, because this was a part of the year. Anyway. But this party was actually seriously cool. No, it was just not just a, just a weird anniversary. No, 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 no. No, this party actually had a purpose. Alone. The lab decorations, the entire lab was decorated, however. But you know what the cool part about it was? You know what how you know what was cool about this party? The lab was decorated like it was abandoned. This was due to us abandoning it after it was temporarily shut down in 2018. So since we have the world back at the time, which we still do, I decorated the lab to make it look like it was actually abandoned to feel like nobody was there due to the corruption. And I think I did pretty freaking good on it because it already looks pretty cool. So I decorated the whole lab to make it look like it was entirely abandoned. And my lord, I think I seriously did a great job. Because I put cobwebs and darkened the whole lab just to make it seem like it was actually abandoned. Like nobody was there. And nobody was once the world was corrupted. Everything was gone. Just gone. 
And that was the best part of it. Decorating the lab to make it seem like it was abandoned thanks to the corruption was actually a really cool idea. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm probably not going to do this again this year because I kind of cannot think of another better idea for it. If you guys have any ideas for if you want me to bring this back this year for the third anniversary, comment down below any some sort of good idea that I could possibly put into this to make it feel different from the previous one. Because I don't want to copy and paste what I did last year if I ever decide to bring this back. It started on August 9th, and fun fact, was only meant to be a part of that one day, actually. It was only meant to actually be there for just the one day. But it actually ended on the 13th instead of August. Just because, well, I kind of forgot that it was still there at the time. Although I don't know if I actually have that plan though. Yeah, you can clearly see what I went for with the theme here. It, 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 like it's all abandoned and stuff. It's basically the Halloween party. Just without all the Halloween decorations. Basically. That's what I was trying to go for here. Next! Next up guys, we have the Rainbow Party of 2020. It started on August 20th and was originally meant to end on... Um, <clears throat> September 3rd, but actually ended on September 24th instead, due to me forgetting to take it down, just like all the other events that got delayed. But this probably had to be the prettiest rainbow party I have ever created. This was not based off of any specific beat. And fun fact, this was actually the first rainbow party to have the entire downstairs of the lab decorated. Not joking here. This was the first ever Rainbow Party to have the entire lab downstairs decorated. Oh, and Rainbow Road this time was fantastic. You see, Rainbow Road was no joke this time. It actually went all over the lab. Oh, and to prove it went all over the lab, I will give you a various screenshot of what I'm talking about. Well, why don't we have ourselves a look? Because guess what? This happened. Yep, the entire downstairs was decorated. How cool is that? How cool was that? The entire downstairs was decorated for the party for the first time ever. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't know if I'm going to be doing that again for this year's rail party because, holy frick, it took forever to clean up. I'm not even kidding. It took legit hours to clean up. And I'm not even kidding. It took forever to clean up. All right. But really, though, Rainbow Road was awesome. It went all over every single decorated room in the entire party, which that was insane. That was like one of my goals for the party, was to have it go all over the lab for the party, just as a little bit of a tour of the party. Of course, there was actually, for the first time since 2016's first ever Rainbow Party, to have a catalog. That's right, there was a catalog in this one, and it was fantastic. It based off of all the colors in the entire party, which was seriously cool. Now, although this happened to be the longest rainbow party ever, lasting exactly five weeks, and that was my fault, it still was cool. It was still very, very cool. It, but it probably had to be the most creative rainbow party and most colorful rainbow party I think I have ever created. So with that being said, everybody, that is it for this one. Let's move on to the next one, which is actually not going to take long, actually. So let's move on. Oh, and did I mention this was the first party that started the trend of the return of infinite parties? Yeah, Lab of Doom would be the end of that this year, as I need to clean that up now after I make the video. 
what's it called, this weekend. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Rainbow Shape were also available in this party on the second week. This next one should not take long at all, just like the Halloween one won't either. This party, next up, was, well, have yourselves a look. It was the Western Party of 2020. This was actually another brand new party. That's right, another brand new party. My god, we were so good with the new events this time. And don't worry, there will be plenty more of those in 2021. Okay, maybe not really, because there almost has been no events this year besides the anniversary party in Love Do. And the New Year's party. That was it. Anyway, point is, I'll get to those next time. At least, when I showcase them again next year. You know, in a video like this. So then, the Western Party. It started on September 24th, originally meaning to start on September 17th, and was originally meant to end on October 1st, but it actually ended on October 25th. This was because I couldn't get into the lab the entire time that the party was on, which sucked a lot. Yeah, I couldn't get into the uh, lab the entire time for some reason. Eventually, I did again for the Christmas party, which we'll get to later. Which we're actually almost there, actually, because there was no party for November. Because we forgot. Anyway, the whole lab was decorated, and also you could have noticed this was actually by picture. So yes, the whole lab was decorated in a Western theme. I am pretty sure we are not doing this again this year, just because I'm pretty sure I already did a good job last year. But anyway, point is, throughout the party, on the second week to be exact, the games that were originally in the Western style theme from the fair actually made a return here. And that was cool, because I did not think I would ever come up with that idea. The Western Coaster actually didn't come back, actually. That was the only thing that didn't come back. The Bullseye Game and Memory Card Game and Build Challenge all came back, though. But not the roller coaster. That was weird because that was originally planned. But it didn't. And that sucked. It really did. Anyway, as you would expect, the entire lab again was decorated in a Western theme. It was actually the second time in a row that the entire lab office, actually, sorry, the third time in a row that the lab office was entirely changed to a completely different building. The first one was the elemental party. The second one was the rainbow party. And now the western party? Holy frick! And that was not actually even the last of it. Even the same happened with the Halloween party. Which we'll get to in just a few minutes, because this one doesn't take long. So anyway, with that being said, all throughout the party, not only did those games come back, the Milk Challenge, Memory Card Game, and Bullseye Game, without the explosion of the uh, roller coaster, um, it still looks very cool. We even had some horses in like a barn area, which the recycling plant was turned into a barn, which held horses for the said Western theme. And that was actually... Oh, wait, right! I forgot. The uh, Fiesta was held during this party to uh, commemorate not having one in 2018 or 2019. So it made a return after, like, three years in this party. Which also went for the exact same time as the Western Party. So that was cool. That also came back, too. And with that being said, that, I think, was actually the end of this part. I'm trying to see if there were any more rooms decorated. Oh wait, never mind. I'm wrong. There actually were more rooms decorated. The downstairs I forgot was entirely decorated too. So yeah, like I said, the entire lab was decorated for this party. And my god was it cool. Everything here was cool about this party. So with that being said, everybody, that is it for this part. We're going to now move on to the Halloween party because it actually looked cool at the same time. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention during the elemental party, 
the uh, dojo room with all three dojos actually got a new redesign, but it was actually after the party ended. So with that being said, that day for the Western party. Huh? What the? Hold on. Okay, guys, I fixed it. We can now move on. Next up was the Halloween party. Just like the Western party, I had to showcase it for pictures because for the second time in a row, I couldn't get into the lab the entire time. It started on October 25th, originally October 22nd, and ended on December 4th, originally meaning to end on, well, November 5th. But once it got delayed to the 25th, I would have ended it on, the on November 6th. But it actually ended four weeks after that on December 4th by complete accident. This was again because I couldn't get into the lab the entire time, making this the longest Halloween party to ever occur in the lab, lasting six weeks. And no, that is not happening this time for this year. I already know when it's going to happen. So with that being said, this probably also had to be the biggest Halloween party yet after the success of the 2019 one. So with that being said, that was cool. So just like usual, the entire lab I had to showcase it for pictures just because I couldn't get in the whole time. Which sucked. Because it looked cool. So as you'll notice, all of them were cool and decorated. The lab, Evil City Leader actually designed the lab as a haunted mansion to take over the lab. But you gotta admit, that was awesome. He actually took over the lab and changed it into a haunted mansion. Which seriously was awesome. That being said, however, there was a lot to go with in this party. So yes, Evil Jade Leader did indeed change it into a haunted mansion. Which, as you can see, looks pretty obvious compared to what he did. So everything was changed. The skyscraper obviously came back, as usual. But really, in reality, the entire lab was changed into a haunted mansion due to Evil Street Leader. It was actually cool and seriously amazing. There were even new costumes featured at this party for the first time since 2015. Which made it also super cool. So, the whole lab was designed like a haunted mansion, even a graveyard area was added. Which was also seriously cool. I will never understand why it is so cool. Ah, oh, hold on. Yeah, seriously, everything was designed like a haunted mansion. It was seriously awesome. This probably had to be the coolest Halloween party we have ever done. Even the special labs were decorated for the first time in like four years. Even the downstairs was decorated for the first time. Which also made it awesome. There was so much in this party. And yes, again, all new costumes. That was also fantastic as well. That was it. And lastly, but not least, the Christmas party. Yep, for once there was no November events. This was the first time ever in the entire lab's history to not have a November event. Instead, we go directly to Christmas. It started on December 16th, originally meaning to start on December 18th, but I decided to start it two days early because I couldn't wait any longer because it was going to be that good, and was originally meant to end on January uh, 6th, actually. Instead, it actually ended a week later on January 13th because once again, for the millionth time now, I forgot to take it down. What is wrong with me? And no, this wasn't the last time that happened. That also continued into 2021. As you would have probably guessed by now. So anyway, this party was actually entirely different. Just like the Halloween party, there was actually something new. For the first time ever, the lab was actually designed under an actual theme. 
this time being complete ice. That's right, the entire lab was decorated in complete ice. That's right. I'm not even kidding. Complete ice. I cannot believe it. And yes, the snowy slash icy dimension was introduced in this party too. That was cool. Anyway, with that being said, everything from the past five holiday events or Christmas events had all made a return. And just like the Halloween party, guess what? And just like the summer party, Halloween party, Western party, and all those, all the rooms were entirely new once again. Finally, for once there are no repeated designs. The last time to have this happen was the 2018 Christmas party where all of them were new. Seriously, it felt great. And yes, the iconic blue Christmas library was finally not featured here. After like four years, the only thing that actually made a return in this party was of course the iconic Christmas workshop. But that was the only thing that actually was the same. Besides that, everything else was entirely different. And when I mean entirely different, I mean seriously entirely different. That's right. Everything was different in this party. And I'm actually glad we did this. Everything in all of plain sight was entirely different, and I'm glad we did that because... It was kind of getting kind of boring reusing the same themes over and over again. But at least we did bring everything back that made these events special, however. And we'll still be doing the same thing again in 2021. Yes, finally, the iconic library blue Christmas design was nowhere to be seen here finally after like four years. It was also the first Christmas event since 2018 not to use that as well, just that design. The Blue Christmas Library. That was awesome. Look, I still love the design, but it get but it got kind of old consistently using it every year. So it was cool to change it. And even that won't be returning this year either, because I got a better idea in mind. Alright. Now with that being said, there was only one feature in this entire party that actually stayed after the party ended as a permanent new addition. Now what was that? Well, it was none other than the railroad. That's right! It actually stayed after the party ended as a permanent new addition to the lab. Why was this a thing? Well, it felt cool. So we kept it after the party ended. How cool is that? With that being said, everybody, although the lab was completely frozen solid due to the temperature of the lab being very low. Now, why could this have been caused? I don't know. Maybe it could have happened caused due to Evil Sheet Leader. Who knows? I'm pretty sure Evil Sheet Leader cranked the temperature all the way down to freezing without any of us knowing. And we couldn't fix it. So with that being said, that was seriously cool. And with that being said, guys, that is it for all the Zoazab events. However, I realized I completely forgot about Zoazab 3. You gotta be kidding me. I completely forgot about Zoazab 3. Thankfully, everybody, those won't take long, because there was almost not. Yeah, it was kind of my fault for forgetting about Zoe's at free, but trust me guys, this will not take long at all. At least I hope. Let's take a look. Nope, this will not take long at all. I just checked how many videos there are, and there is almost none. So, thank God, because there was almost none here. The first party in 2020 for Zoe's at free was the Rainbow Party. It started on April 28th and ended May 5th. This was the first party since around 2019 to be at Zoza 3. 
So, why was this a thing? I don't know. We were bored. So we decided to just make an annual rainbow party here at Zoza 3. Because, why not? I mean, come on, we had nothing better to do, so why not just make something as creative as this? So, of course, to celebrate the return of Zoza 3 after many months, six months to be exact, I decided to laugh at the rainbow party. Now, although we did have this party later on in the year at Zoza 2, as you saw earlier, this was actually held first at Zoza 3. And it was actually pretty cool, and actually more creative than I really thought. So, of course, as you would have clearly expected, I think we all would see this coming by now, the entire lab would have been decorated in a rainbow theme. It looks super, super cool. I cannot believe I actually was able to pull all that off. I'm actually impressed. And with that being said, however, that comes to the rooms, though. If you take a look at the rooms, they all had a rainbow cloud theme. Kind of a reference to, uh... Uh... It kind of had a kind of a reference to the 2018 Rainbow Party at Zoas Up 2, where it was kind of just like a cloud theme. And you actually had to jump over the clouds to avoid the blue parts on the floor, which would be the sky. If you touch the blue part on the floor, being the sky, you would uh, fall and just die because you would have touched the blue part. I don't know what else to put that in. I don't know how else to say that, but... It was cool, and I think it was also brought back in the 2020 Rainbow Party. I think this was up too, although I actually I don't remember seeing any of that. With that being said, this was a pretty cool party. There were items every single day that resembled all colors of the rainbow, so that was pretty cool. Moving on. Next up for Zoas Up 3 is actually the event that's actually coming back next week to Zoas Up 2. And that is the Best Party Awards. It started on May 19th and was originally meant to end on June 2nd. However, it actually ended on June 23rd. This was because I forgot to take it down after that because, uh, yeah, I completely forgot it was still there. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point of this party was actually the first Best Party Awards. In around uh, four years, give or take, at the lab itself. And my lord, did I do a fantastic job on this party. It looked great. It looked absolutely fantastic. Yup, that's right. The best party awards. It looked fantastic at this party. So basically, the lab was decorated in a red carpet theme. And of course, we had to vote on what party was the best party that we have had at the lab in the last few years since the last one in 2016. Since the best party awards hadn't occurred since 2016 before this one. Of course, since it had been four years since the last ever best party awards, we had times more parties to choose from from the last few years that have occurred since then. Ultimately, I kind of forgot which one won. Yeah, I kind of forgot which one actually won. Because I don't think I ever showed you the results, I don't think. But I gotta admit, this was seriously cool. I am definitely planning on doing this again in Zola's Up 2 next week because it feels very, very cool. Right now, the reason why I can't do it in Zola's Up 3 is because now we have Operation Galaxy as of uh, <clears throat> two days ago. So basically, going into uh, the lab itself, there were tons of parties you could choose from between here. And it was super, super cool. And over there, you could have voted for, you could place your vote for where you wanted it to be. It was a super cool idea. And I'm glad I came up with it again after many years. And yes, all the, while that happened, a ton of rooms were actually decorated too. Not all of them, but some of them were too. Some of them included the underground party room, the lab office, the outside, and I think that was it. 
I think also the room too. But it was super, super cool seeing all this stuff happen. I kind of forgot that some of this was decorated too. And yeah. So with that being said, although this event was awesome, it was. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to do this again in Zola's Up 2 next week, actually. On June 20th. Alongside the fair, because they're both happening at the same time this year. That's awesome, right? Well, with that being said, let's move on to the next event, which is actually the last one for this video. Finally, but not least, for real this time, it is the summer party slash 1.16 release party for Zoe slash 3. It started on June 23rd and originally was meant to end on July 7th. However, it actually ended on August 4th instead because for the millionth time now, we went on yet another Zoe's Lab free hiatus. This was actually cool. It actually combined elements from the recently released 1.16, at least at the time it was, because recently 1.17 just came out. Around like four days ago, actually, as I'm recording this. Uh, but at the time, 1.16 had only been out for like a day at the time of me filming the video for this. So, what I did was, is I combined both the summer party with 1.16 by releasing items related to both. It was actually a success. And I cannot believe I managed to pull it off. Like back there, you saw the balcony was combined with 1.16. So that was pretty cool. At the same time, however, not only were items related to both the summer and 1.16 release, but a ton of rooms were decorated based off of them. And I'm not kidding when I say this. Now, although the majority of the rooms were summer themed, and I mean the majority of the rooms were summer themed because it was mainly meant to be the summer party, I did add bits of 1.16 in there somewhere. And you could clearly tell where I did. Because some of these updates actually became permanent new renovations after the event was over. And thank God they were because I actually love them. So with that being said, all of these rooms were decorated in pretty cool ways that I will still never forget. So yes, this was pretty cool. It was super cool combining both. Because um, it was originally just meant to be this, the summer event itself. And not all this 1.16 stuff. Nope. It was actually combined with both. And that was awesome. And guys, that actually wraps up our Zola's Up events for 2020. Finally, after like an hour and 38 minutes, we are done. Seriously, that took forever. I thought it was going to be longer than that, but nope, apparently it wasn't. All right, everybody, see you guys later for a backyard video and Creativeverse. I wanted to get this video out before those two just so I can just get it out of the way. And I'll see you guys later for those videos. I'll see you guys next time for our next Saturday Stories next week on June 19th. I have no clue when that's like what that is going to be, but it's definitely going to be something worth it in the future. I promise you that one for a, for sure. Or you never know. I could possibly make another Saturday Stories today, too, if I felt like it. That might not be a bad idea, actually. Eh, we'll see. All right, see you guys next time.